Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 129. My name is Jason Opening. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC. I'm here with the cruise man himself, Scott Ferrioli. I'm the owner of DVC-Rental.com and Buy and Sell DVC.com. And today is July 26, 2023. It's 11 months from today is June 26. Just so, you know, again, 11 month window at your home resort, you can book 11 months out. Um, at your resort that you don't own at, you can book up to seven months in advance. So that date is going to be February 26, 2024. Um, so uh, let's see, buy and sell, buy and sell dvc.com, dvc rental, dvc rental. Remember the dash to save the cash. Um, we're going to start with the buy and sell side of things. And one thing that um, it's not a huge trend that's going on, but I just want to mention because. Uh, and, and of course, we have brand new people tuning in every week. We have to remember that, you know, we have yeah. people tuning in. They don't know about DVC. Sometimes we go off on our tangents about desserts. People out there need information about DVC, you know. So these DVC resorts, they all have a different end date, you know, yes. but there is a, a decent uh, amount of resorts that expire 2042. One of those resorts um, did have an extension. So some people um, own at Oak West expires 2042, and some people own at Oak West that expires 2057. But as we sit here in 2023, uh, the 2042 date, that does seem to be getting closer. I don't know if it yeah. feels closer for you. It feels closer. It feels like it's creeping up. Yeah. And, you know, for, for people, you know, who are involved in the business, you sit there and it makes you wonder like, okay, we're getting a little closer. Disney hasn't said anything yet. What's going to happen? I know we've discussed this in the past and nobody really knows exactly what's going to happen. So in the comments don't ask us because we don't know. I mean, again, my guess is that if anything's going to be decided, it's going to be a whole, you know, like after 2037 or after, when it gets much closer to the day because they see what the vacation trends are at that time and they see how many times I've been going to Vero Beach and, you know, they have to, uh, you know, check out those things. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing they're just going to sit there and say, okay, you know, as of 2042, you know, the, the beach club, as an example, ends. So we're going to restart selling them brand new 2042's beach club, good for 50 years for $400 a point. <laughs> I'm assuming it's just going to start over and the prices are going to, but you never know. Yeah. I mean, you know, because it, I mean, so much has to do with the fact that what inventory they're selling of their own at that time, yep. you know, because they have all this inventory lined up. So they really want to take on all this beach club inventory. I mean, again, there's so much. So, uh, well, but I just want to mention that they do have end dates. So you have Oak Key West, uh, Boardwalk, Beach Club, Hilton Head, Vero Beach, Boulder Ridge. And some of those people are, you know, they're, they're kind of making a decision, okay, I'm going to sell this resort and I'm going to buy something that then, you know, because if they jump, you go from 2042, you can jump to up, the next one is Saratoga 2054. So if they sell that, uh, let's say they sell that boardwalk property and then they buy a Saratoga, now they just extended their membership by 12 more years. Yeah. So there are people that are doing that. Um, and then you say, well, oh, but then, you know, who out there, uh, you know, who's going to buy my resort that expires 2042? Well, there's still people that are buying these resorts that expire 2042 because they want to get in at, say, Boardwalk and Beach Club yeah. because they want to book that reservation uh, 7 to 11 months in advance. But there's also people out there who I'm talking to that are in the age range of, let's just say they're above 60, and they're like, I just want to buy Old Key West because I can get it at a decent price. And, you know, they feel like a fair price and I'm going to use it for the next 20 years. You know, I'm going to use my points. How I'm going to use my points. And I would better use my money to buy, you know, X amount of points at Old Key West than to say buy, uh, use my money to buy X amount of points at say the Polynesian. Yeah. So, so you have that going on. I mean, really, I'm not. And, uh, you know, some people, you know, they ask me my opinion. It's really, it comes down to that's just a, a matter of personal choice because you really have to dive into how you're using your membership, especially when you come across people that have been making most of their reservations under seven months already for the last five, seven, ten years. So for them moving into, say, a Saratoga, it's not a huge factor because they can continue to do that same thing that they've already been doing. And if you have someone that says, 
you know, they bought the boardwalk, they loved the boardwalk for X amount of times, but then they started, okay, let's bounce around here, let's go here, let's go here. It just becomes easier for them to sell it because they're not as tied to, well, if I don't get boardwalk under seven months, you know, I'm not worried about it anymore. So uh, it's something to consider. You look like you have a deep thought there. Am I, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just looking at the food review kind of going, oh. I, was, I, was trying, I was trying to peek ahead because I figured I'm, it seemed like you were kind of trending down a little bit. I'm like, okay, I'm, I got to start looking at the food review, so I have to sit here and stare at yes, it while I'm talking. Yes, remember where I ate at. I have to remember where I ate at, so sorry. So, uh, I swear I was paying attention. So that was just a... <laughs> I don't think he was. Scott, you're staring at, you're staring oh. at your paper. You have no idea that I just called nope. your mother a name. Like, what? <laughs> but we're on to the food review of the week here. Oh, now we're going to go to the food review. Yes. Come here, I'm going to eat you. Get in my belly. All right, for today's food review, I'm at Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe at Magic Kingdom, or just Pecos Bills if you want to abbreviate it. I tried the pork carnitas rice bowl for $12.29. Uh, it's yellow rice topped with seasoned pork, grilled peppers and onions, black beans, lettuce, tomato, sour cream, and salsa. That sounds perfect. It sounds very good. Uh, I want to put out that what, what they're calling pork carnitas, it's just pulled pork. Pork carnitas are really like, it's cubed up and kind of like fried. And it was one of my favorite things that they served at Olivia's at Old Key West pre-pandemic. And when when they opened back up, they took the pork carnitas off the menu and I stopped going there. But if anybody's watching, please bring the pork carnitas with the chimichurri sauce back to Olivia's. It was one of my favorite things on property. But I digress. Um, it says rice bowl. You didn't. I know. I, I, you didn't, I, it's called a rice bowl. It wasn't. It wasn't, you figure you'd get a, a bowl, you know, with, with everything in there. It's essentially just like one of those like sides, like side dishes that you get, like with like, um, put French fries in, like the little paper side dishes. I mean, you probably saw, saw the picture. So you, you don't even get a bowl, which I really wish, it would have been much easier to eat it in a bowl than eat it, eat it in this little side pocket thing. Uh, and over the past couple of years, they, they've removed the toppings bar there because normally you can go over there and get some more guacamole and extra lettuce and tomatoes and all the sides to put on there to like build it up a little bit because it is a very small amount. That's gone. So, I mean, it used to be a lot better in my opinion. I mean, I didn't, not that I've had this specific one before. Um, normally I used to get the fajita platter and do the same thing. You get the fajita platter, I'd go to the, the toppings bar. I load up with all the stuff I want. And a lot of times my wife and I used to share the fajita platter, which is why maybe they cut back on this type of stuff <laughs> is that, you know, I had all this stuff on the side and I'm eating mostly vegetables and they didn't want that. But I, I probably wouldn't get to this again. It was, it was still decent. I give it a 7.7, .7, but I'd probably go back to the fajita platter because it's very, it's very, very similar to this, except you also get the nice fajitas with it. And it's just, I think a little bit better, but I really wish that, I was, I was excited because I wanted the pork carnitas and it was just regular pulled pork. So just a little disappointing on that one just because of a terminology issue. But not bad, 7.7. .7. Very similar to the fajita. You might well get it again, but at least give, give, give us a bowl. And now we move on to the rental side of things. I think we're still on the cruise, which is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I don't want to over talk about the cruise too much here. I don't um, think we talk about it enough. Really, because I figured a lot of people are tuning for the Disney stuff, and I was like, this is all Europe. This has nothing to do with Disney. I just remember, DVC Dash Rental, it mm -hmm. has your uh, confirmed reservations, and you can uh, look for uh, availability. Back to the cruise. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. That's it. <laughs> Check for Disney rooms. Back to the cruise. Okay, we had an absolutely amazing time while we were in Europe. Um, I think, I think our favorites are probably walking around Santorini in Greece, uh, taking in the amazing views and waters, water views from on top of the island. Um, they took us into some small, small towns, the, the shopping in uh, Ia, which is one of the, the main cities there. That's one, you probably see it all over TikTok. You know, it's got, it's got the, all the white, st whitewashed buildings, the, the um, churches with the big blue domes overlooking the water. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous area, I mean, but um, very crowded. Santorini is like the, the number one tourist vacation spot in Greece. Uh, Santorini and Mykonos are the two biggest ones, and we did do Mykonos as well. But San, we like Santorini a lot nicer, like a lot more. I will say funny story, a funny story about Santorini. <laughs> you get off the ship in the morning, and there, there's two ways to get, you, you, you're all the way down the port. You have to get up a cliff 
to start your day. There's no way around it. And there's two ways to get up there. You can take a cable car, which you wait in line. We're waiting in line for probably 30 minutes at six euros per person. Or you can ride a dump. You can walk, or they have something called the donkey stairs. I thought you were talking about food and land. No, no. They have something called the donkey stairs. It's this big path that cuts across up the island. It's a ramp. Like it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a ramp you're walking up. And then there's a, a, a step, a big step, it's for, for donkeys. And they, so you can ride a donkey up the, up the cliff, or you can try to walk up it. And there's also, there's donkey poop everywhere. So it, it, it smells wonderful. So on the boat, they're saying, don't take the donkey stairs, take the cable car. So we take the cable car, go up to Santorini, absolutely beautiful. Finish up our tour, drop back off in Ia, which is the main area and where the cable car and the donkey steps are, because we've got to go now back down the aisle, down the mountain to get to the to the ship. And they say they say the last boat's at like eight o'clock at night, and it's 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 probably five p.m. at this time, and the line is has got it. I mean, it's like down the street, down. I mean, it, it's it's got to be. A three hour plus line. 400 people probably? More. More, okay. Oh, well, well over a thousand people in line. I mean, huge. So we're like, oh gosh, if we go in the back of this line, we might not make it. We'll take the donkey steps. Worst choice ever. You're, you, essentially, you're walking a mile and a half going down. And these steps, and every time you hit one step, you take like three steps down a step, three steps down a step. It's just killing your knees. This is, this is the first place we stopped, which is one of the reasons I was icing myself the whole, whole cruise, is that these donkey steps are killing us. And sometimes donkeys are going past us. People are pulled up to the, on the side, you're holding onto the rails, and it, it's steep and slippery, and there's donkey poop everywhere, and it's, it smells horribly. It was just a nightmare. So, I mean, I, I, some people said that it was about a th- two and a half to three hour line to, to sit there and, and take Get that stupid the- cable car. But I mean, I was like, I don't want to sit there and, and stand out in the sun for three hours in this line going super slow waiting for a cable car. I'm like, well, let's just walk down the steps. How bad could it be? It was bad. I, I probably should have waited for the cable car. But anyway, so the, didn't like that about Santorini, but Santorini is absolutely beautiful. One of the best things. Um, well, next, Florence. Uh, F- Florence is city mixed with these amazing, Duomos and churches, hundreds of years old. So you've got entire gigantic buildings that are just made out of different colored marbles. So like the, the design, you know, it's got these like pat, you know like patchwork patterns in this um, whole huge huge building. I'll show you pictures later. Huge building, and it's all different colors and everything. It's all different colored marbles the whole time. They're pieced in there, and it's absolutely magnificent. It was, it was, I've never seen anything like this before um were people in, i mean where i just have to ask this question because i'm just curious mm-hmm. were people in greece i mean i heard ouzo is a big thing there like they drink ouzo 4 I, p.m before their dinner i've heard i've heard the same exact thing there was no mention on ouzo on any of the tours or anything there was alcohol mentioned in italy a lot but no no i mean again i've heard ouzo, same exact thing about ouzo ouzo was not mentioned on anything um, but yeah, it, like your night, the night in Greece, like the, the NCL wasn't serving ouzo no, for your no, no, with no. your dinner. Okay, no, but yeah, like Italy has a limoncello, which is made out of famous lemons that they have there. They're big, sweet lemons. I, I, I tried that. That was that was pretty decent. But and I forget your kids are how old they in there? They're well, twelve 15? and fifteen. Okay, twelve and fifteen. And they are they they they. I mean. They enjoyed this trip. It was yes, yes. They, they had a really good time. My, my oldest one, especially, he he likes history and stuff like that. So I think he, I, I, the twelve year old really enjoyed it as well. But I think the fifteen year old really appreciated it more than the twelve year old did because he, he understood it more. And you know, they're, they're telling us about you know, like the next one. Like we went to Malta, and you know, the city you know, it's this tiny island around the water, and the whole outside of the city is just built with a big like fortress around it with these big walls. And they're telling you about like in this. You know, twelve hundreds. You know, these people invaded, and this, and it's these beautiful old, old buildings inside, but surrounded by fortresses, and you're on this water. And uh, we took part of our cruise, or part of part of our tour, was that you know, like the little gondolas that they have in like Venice. They had like those little boats 
and they had six per- people allowed in the boat, and they were uh, powered by a small little engine. And the g- guy, you know, it, there was 50 of us on our tour, and they just put us in these little boats, and they just drove us around like the marina, and they showed us different things. Absolutely gorgeous. Did that for a half hour. They were showing us where, um, right now, they're filming for the new uh, Gladiator. Gladiator 2 movie is going to be coming out. Yeah, it's supposed to take place in Rome. Can you guys sign some waivers to be actors? No, I didn't have, didn't have to do that. I, I wish. It was filmed, fil- filmed in Malta, though. And so it was like, like, from what we heard, like, you know, I want to root it for people. Russell Crowe is there filming. You know, Russell Crowe in the first movie passed away. But apparently he's there and there's other big people in it. And it's, it was, it was a absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it was, it was one of those things. I, it's hard to me. Have you, have you been to Europe? Yeah. I mean, you're seeing this stuff and like, it doesn't seem real. I mean, you, you sit there, you walk into a square and just like there's these buildings with the, just again, like these different colors and these patterns. You're like, I've never seen anything like this in my life. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I keep, sorry, I keep saying Greece. So like, if you were to sit, tell someone, like, let, let, I'm just saying Greece. Mm-hmm. So do you recommend the way you went on a cruise ship? Or would you say, oh, go to Greece for like seven nights or you're not 100% I, sure yet? Not 100% sure. I mean, you know, we went to essentially four different places in Rome. So I four different places in Italy and they're all very, very different. So I think, it, I think the best thing to do, I mean, if you're thinking about this and you think, you know, I, I would say do exactly what we did. Because then you get a little flavor. You get a little flavor of everything. <laughs> the, what was it called? The donkey. Uh... No, avoid the donkey path, though. <laughs> but do what we it's did. It's so funny that you said b- biggest regret, and then five minutes later you're like, do exactly what we did. Besides the donkey, <laughs> no, no, I mean do the cruise. Okay. And, and get a taste of you. everything. <laughs> Again, all these different places in Italy, all these different places in Greece, and then you said, then you go, I, I really love these two areas, and then then you want to go back. You can only, you get a little taste of each little place, but you know, you want to go back and say, I want to, Florence was amazing. I'd love to do three nights in Florence and then three nights in Rome. Like you, you want to sit there and go back and pick and choose, but this was a great way to get the experience, so many different things to realize what you may like. So I'm sorry I, to keep, but I have to ask more questions. So like you go on a Caribbean cruise, right? And let's just say you uh, your stop is at say Ocho Rios, Ocho Rios Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And there's people that, 25% of the people, they've been there before. They're not getting off. And there's other people that are just not getting off. Mm-hmm. So you have... Everybody's you know, getting off. I was gonna add, that's my question. I, on this I, ship here, I, I, is I, it I, like I, the entire I think, ship I think off? so. I, I can't imagine there were too many people who stayed on the ship. Like, eh, you know what? Let me go down the water slide. <laughs> we're in Florence. Let, let me do the water slide <laughs> instead. That's what I was... So that's why I didn't do the water off. slide. I was like, you, know, you get off because there's, there's so much stuff to see. And... You don't want to miss these places because, you know, odds are I'm not going to be back in Crete again, you know. I mean, right, right, what exactly. else am I going to go to Crete, Greece? You know, you want to you experience it. You know, now that I've been there, I go, I wouldn't go back to Crete. But, you know, I wasn't going to miss it because, you know, I wanted to do the water slides by myself. And then a, a majority of your stops, are you a docked or tendered? Most, there were, th- there were three tenders. Three tenders. Of, of the nine stops, there were three tenders. And is it, so, I mean, obviously the docks ones, they go pretty smooth because you're just mm-hmm. walking off, walking on, right? The, the, ten, the tenders, they did a very good job getting everybody off the boat on the tenders. And there were a bunch of, the tenders, I, I was picturing smaller tenders. The, the, the tenders probably hold 100 plus people on the boat. And they, they have multiple ones going, you know, rotating through. So you, you didn't have to wait too long for a tender ever. They were, they were very good. But uh, the last one I said, was Rome. Rome was not part of the tour, but you know, we flew into Rome, which is the you know, main airport, did two nights in Rome, went to Cittavecchia, did our cruise, came back, and then took the train back to Rome where we stayed one more night. So we did a total of three nights in Rome. And how long was the flight from Orlando? Well, uh, there's no direct flights from Orlando. So, so you flew the, right, from... On, on, the, on the way there, we flew into Montreal, then to Rome, and on the way back, we flew to Toronto, to back home. So both times we went into We didn't Canada. spend the night in Montreal, right? No, no, no just, you know, we had a couple hours connecting between flights. And so the flight from Orlando to Montreal? For three hours. Three hours, and Montreal to Rome? About eight. Eight. Yeah, about eight hours. Between eight and nine. Is that the longest flight you've ever been on? Yes. And how was that? Not, not, not too bad. Um, we, we flew with Air Canada. Um, the, the flight, for the long flights, I paid a little bit extra. They're, they're big planes. So uh, you know, you got the first class up front, 
you know, the individual pods, which is wonderful. And then I wish. <laughs> then the next one, I think maybe it was groups of like three bigger seats together. And then back, it goes three, four, three. So for, for both of our trips, we, we, we actually, one, on the way there, we took the four in the middle and we, we chose the first row. The first row was extra leg room. So I had to pay extra to have the extra leg room spot so you could lay out. This is just a, like a wall in front of you blocking us from the, you know, the, the rich people. So I paid extra for that. that. That was really nice. But the seats are only like this wide. They're super, super tight. So you have tons of leg room, but you are wedged in this seat and it was pretty uncomfortable for a, a long flight. And do they recommend like walking around after so many yes. hours? Or? Yeah, you're, you're supposed to walk around. And what stunk us on the way down there is that it was a very, very nice plane, but you know, we had the four in the middle and walls here, but on each side, the bathrooms are right there. So, and th this flight left at, oh gosh, maybe six, six o'clock at night. So, you know, we're, we're getting in like, whatever, three o'clock in the morning or, some, or something like that. And it's, but in their time, it's 930 in the morning, but you're trying to sleep. And there are people who are just coming and hanging out right by the bathroom and they're, they're chatting and they're like joking. I'm like, it's two o'clock in the morning. Shut the heck up. You know, I'm, I'm laying there trying to sleep and they're just people chatting. Like they're just clueless people who just wanted to get up and walk around. And they, that's where they would stop, right by the bathrooms. And they would just hang out there and just chat. And the, the, I'm, I'm sitting there trying to sleep and there's literally you know, people three feet from me just having a conversation, just standing up and having a conversation while I'm laying there. <laughs> And your kids slept or they did fine? Or? The kids slept perfectly fine. I slept probably on and off for like 45 minutes. And my wife got maybe 10 minutes of sleep at most. She was the most uncomfortable out of all of us. So it was, it was not great. And so the walking on this trip, that was quite a bit of ton, walking. A lot of walking. And like rolling. And there's no way to get out of the walking? Or? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there, 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 are, there are other tours, I'm sure, that maybe they don't do as much walking. But the thing is, like a lot of these places, like especially with, well, Italy, like you get to the port and then you want to go visit Florence. Florence was an hour and a half drive. So you'd get on the big coach bus. Actually, for the Florence trip, we actually had like a, a private van type thing. It was us and another family. And you know they, they drove you an hour and a half there. So it's not like it was like all the walking, but there's, you know, driving to places and then you're just walking around and doing a tour where you're walking and then you hop back on a bus. So it, it wasn't terrible. There wasn't, there wasn't too much walking. Rome, there was a lot of walking because there was no real buses. It was just walking tours. And our hotel was on the, on the first stop when we, we, we arrived there, we were right by the Colosseum. The second stop, we were closer to the Trevi Fountain and like the Pantheon. But there's a ton of stuff to see. Like again, Rome, Colosseum, the Forum, Vatican, Sistine Chapel, Trevi Fountain, Spanish Steps. Like, you know, we went and visited all this stuff. Um, also, you end up eating gelato almost daily. Gelato is huge there. Everywhere you go, there's a gelato um, built, not a cart, like, a, you know, a store that sells gelato. Every four stores is like gelato almost. I mean, it's... And it's, it's good, right? It's freaking fantastic. Yeah, because I... I it's so yeah. good. It's a, Food was fantastic in Rome. Um, best pastas I've had in my life, I will say. And I, I, I'm still thinking about the pasta I had in Rome. Unbelievably, pretty bad pizza in Italy. Really? I, I can't believe I'm saying this, especially in Rome. The, the pizza in Rome was not very good. Naples, Napoli, is where pizza was invented. And that's where Via Napoli at Epcot takes after. They make the same style pizza as Napoli. I will say the Ep the Epcot Vianopoli is as good as the pizza in Naples, and that was the best pizza by far on the trip. I mean, some of some I'm trying to think which one was it. Sicily was pretty de de decent pizza, but like you know, I was expecting the motherland. This amazing pizza, none of it was good that great. N Naples Napoli was the, was the best, but I was going. It's very very similar to Vianopoli, and it just made my kids want to be in Napoli. So we're we're actually in a You'll be going with the Callahans, Cassandra and her family, in uh, like a week or so. So that 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 should be fun. But uh, but the pasta, it was like I watched a bunch of videos online first where they said, "Oh, you gotta go to this restaurant. You you gotta get the uh, the the pasta carbonara, and you gotta try the cacio de pepe, which is the pasta carbonara is mixed with egg and ch and like parm different cheese and um, not pr not prosciutto. Oh God, it starts with it. The other P, um, not prosciutto, 
I'm gonna remember afterwards, but it's, it's, it's like a bacon. And it was unbelievable. It was this, this creamy pasta and the, the, the super crisp, salty bacon. It was unreal. And the cacio de pepe was like cheese, but there's like extra pepper on it. But again, like the pastas were fantastic. The, the pizza was meh, but the pastas, and the best penny alla vodka I've ever had in my life. I mean, you, the people who, you, you know me and the people who watch this, I don't score stuff pretty lightly. I, I, it's very rarely I give anything a nine or higher. The, the, there were three different pastas on this trip that would have been a nine to, I mean, like some of the nine, seven, nine, six. I mean, some, some of the best food I've probably ever had. Some of these pastas were unreal. They're just like, oh my gosh, I've never had any pasta close to this. Are so, your kids going to study abroad now? I joked around about that because we're on the tour. They're like, oh, you know, if you go to the, you know, this was Greece. They're like, oh, yeah, the, the, you know, the university's free if you go to it. If you know, apply, if it's good grades, but it's free if you go. And I'm like, hey, Trent, you know, what do you think? You want to come to, I forget which one we were, Mykonos or whatever. It, was like, or Saint, it might have been Santorini. But he's like, uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I, I joked around. I'm like, you're going to be going, going away, going to Italy and uh, studying abroad? He's like, I don't think so. But they, they, they definitely did love it. Because one of my sons, that's, I mean, he's only 13. Things change, obviously. But he wants to do a summer abroad in, uh, in Greece. When he's, really? That's why I, because when he Ooh. was doing it, he's like, he's like, do you know about this ouzo? And I'm like, the liquor that tastes like black licorice? I'm like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, they drink it every day there. I'm like, what? Mm. Yeah, it's, so it sounds like a great trip. It really, it really was. I'm, I'm still tired from it. It's, it's, I've been back for a while now, and I'm, I'm still tired. I'm trying to absorb all the information that you gave me because, again, for us, like I can't. Again, I think they, your kids must be way more sophisticated than my kids <laughs> because my kids would not. I don't think they could like because my wife and I we picture like the kids going off to college and then going on a cruise, you know, to Greece, um, but. Uh, so it's, I'm trying to absorb all this information. Yeah, they, they were really good. I, I could picture my younger one being bored easily and stuff. He, he, he was really, really good. He was into it because he was taking pictures of everything. And he was sitting there, he'd take a picture and he'd show it to me like, I came out good, right? I'm like, yeah, buddy, that, that looks really, really good. So I mean, he, he, was, he got into it, I think. He, I, it, was, it, was, it was a lot That's of fun. That's awesome. It, it's stuff that you've never seen before, you know? It's, we, you know, we live by Disney and we go on cruises. We, we, we do Caribbean stuff all the time. This, this was stuff that was just like, this is outside my realm of what I even thought buildings could look like. And, and then the churches, oh, we went so many churches, just rent, rent, you know, walking, I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut you off. Just, but you know, you're walking through Rome and there's something that just doesn't look like much. And they say, oh, that's a cool looking church. And you walk in and you're like, oh my God. Like just everything so intricate and the, 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 the murals on the walls and the, the Everything inside was just, everything was blow you away over the top. Oh my God. Well, you're learning about stuff and you're like, oh, well, you know, this is from uh, a thousand BC. And you're like, a thousand BC, a, a thousand before Christ. You picture like, you know, think of the Bible. I'm, I'm walking, I'm looking at buildings that are a thousand years before that ever happened. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's kind of like, it's, 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 it's humbling and unreal. You know, you're like, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm seeing this. I can't believe this stuff exists. I've, I've never seen anything like this. And did you feel safe 24 seven? Most, yes. Um, everything I had seen online, I watched a lot, a lot. I sometimes ended up watching like a TikTok or two about Italy. And then all of a sudden everything started coming in about Italy, which was, which worked out perfectly. Cause that's how I learned about a lot of the foods as well. But lots of pickpockets, watch out for pickpockets. Pickpockets are huge in Italy. We had no issues. I mean, especially like Rome. Rome was where we were by ourselves. Everything else, we were with a tour guide. So Rome was really where we were the most vulnerable. And it's a city. And, you know, we're walking through these, like, little alleys and stuff. Never, you know, I, I've worked in New York and worked in Jersey City. And it's, you know, I've been in Manhattan. You know, I've worked in Manhattan. So, you know, you, you feel more uncomfortable in New York and in New Jersey sometimes at night than you do in Italy. Like you, you felt safe. You always felt safe. There's people around and, and like it was, it was, it was beautiful and, and old feeling. You felt safe, but you just, you always had to be aware that, you know, I'm wearing a backpack, you know, I'm, I'm wearing the backpack. Somebody stay, one of my kids stay behind me. Just keep, keep an eye out, you know, cause again, I, I, the pickpocketing is rampant in, in 
Italy. Oh, really? Oh, it's, it's huge. A lot, a lot of videos have been popping up recently on my TikTok where they actually call them out. And a lot of times it's these pretty young girls. And the, the, I saw one, one arrested. She, she had like, the cops are there, the person filmed them. She had like 10 cell phones on her. These pretty young girls, and they work, they work in groups. There were two or three of them, and one distracts, and just the, 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 they're going to train, and they kind of like stand on top of you, and they're, they're professionals. And lots lots of pickpockets but no issues at all had a blast i, I recommend it i'm dying we're already dying to go back oh really i would love to go. it's 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 expensive obviously so I'm, i don't know when we're gonna get to go back but i, I want to do something similar again just because it was so amazing and it was the be best trip i've ever been on also the most expensive trip i've ever been on but it was it was absolutely wonderful well that's good to hear and is, is this the month to go for the best weather for that? Or, I mean, you went in... I, I went in, in June. June. Mid-June. That, that, that's what's hysterical. June is a fantastic time. They say it's a fantastic time to go. July starts getting really hot, the same with August. And there's never any rain in June. We got to Rome. It poured. The first two days there, it would be okay. We'd go out to go do a tour, pouring down some of the worst... We live... I live in Florida. Some of the worst rain I have ever seen here. We're sitting there with umbrellas and shaking us around and it is pouring and I'm soaking wet and my shoes are soaking wet. My socks are soaking wet. It was a, that was a bit of a nightmare. And they're all going, this is so weird. It never rains in June. But for like a week and a half before I arrived, it was raining every single day. And I was like, oh my God, how horrible it is that we got there and we got hit with it. But when we came back and then we got on the cruise, I was worried that it was going to be in that area. No rain the entire time, and then on the, the last day back in Rome, no rain as well. So nice. everything was perfect except for those two days. June is a very good time to go normally. <laughs> Hopefully you've made it to the end of this episode as well. I've bored everybody to death with this. No more Italy huh. stuff. It was good. It was maybe, good. Maybe he'll pepper it in, but I'm, I'm not planning on talking about any more Italy, Europe. I'm not gonna talk about Vero Beach stuff. anymore. Yeah, he says that now. <laughs> I'm gonna mention it next episode. <laughs> Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Come back next week. We'll get the episode shorter again. Let us know if you've been to Italy or Greece or France or Malta. Or Greece. Or I want to know. I want to know. Uzo. Who's drinking Uzo? <laughs> I hear this. I want to know who's drinking Uzo at 4 o'clock. Or if you've been to Italy, give us some other ideas because we're, we're looking at possibly going back to Europe. And where else would you recommend? You know, we're looking at Scandinavian with a Norway, Denmark type thing in there. England, like, what, what are your suggestions? Anywhere else you recommend or different places in Italy? I still would love to see Venice and I'd like to see Milan and the full of Mal Malfi Coast. And there's a lot of the things I'd like to see still. So let us know what you've done. Come back next week. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>